Hey, Rush Reckless here, and welcome to Rush to Diamond episode two. So, I haven't been grinding this account as much as I should be, I will admit. However, there has been a couple times where in the shop we've gotten some really good cards, and I just picked up some copies. I didn't go, I didn't upgrade any because I want to upgrade them together with you guys. And let's see what we have. So, we actually have a Rack Neglects, which we can get to level two. We also have some Militia, Reign of Frogs, um, Harpies, I'm not going to do, and Wandering Worms, I'm not going to do. But for sure, for sure, we're going to do this upgrade because this upgrade's insane. This is probably one of the better uh, SF Rush cards you can get. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I think Erratic Neglect is huge. Oh my god, so lucky to somehow get <laughs> enough copies for this. But it is actually huge. Uh, especially at level 2, it just gets increasingly better. Because at level 1, it could get like poisoned and just kill itself. Which really sucks. So that's going to help a lot. And honestly, I'm kind of debating between using some militia or not. But... Eh, I really like it. It's a one. Oops, my bad. It's a one mana card. It's really good. I really do like it. I think definitely gonna go ahead and do that. So now, uh, one more thing. Actually, we got so many, st so much stuff. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna we have talk sacrifice, and I think we also have lime limbs, which we're not going to use yet. I think a level three lime limbs is really good, but level two not so much. Yeah, so we could also get this, but we don't have enough gold. That's how behind we are. So um, because, like I said, I'm not gonna be playing any ranked games that you guys don't see so that's why i have been struggling to get some gold i've just been questing a bit and <laughs> not even doing all my quests but anyways getting into the video we're gonna drop these two even though these are our beloved dragon combo we're actually gonna go ahead and drop that now at this point we could consider toxic sacrifice um it's actually not bad like the problem is it's not bad but i really don't like having toxic sacrifice in a deck that's not totally formatted properly yet like it's not constructed well enough to where i can just suicide my cards <laughs> so it gets a little tricky because like crimson sentry is probably better and i really do think crimson sentry here is a little bit better not only because it has a runner so it gives us movement it can also be a lethal finisher and a poison so it could do all kinds of things for us i think it is slightly better than toxic sacrifice at the moment now of course i could change but man, Toxic Sack is so good because you can like do Radic Toxic and that's already three mana and you cycle faster for your other cards. But anyways, um, I am getting away from the point. We need two games to get to Silver 4. We're going to do that this episode, so let's go. And for our very first opponent, I don't think this is a bot, so we're going to go ahead and just think, well, what should we do here? Now, this is hilarious. You can play three cards on your very first turn. Um, three cards in your very first turn is it worth it or is it not worth it like that that is obviously very tricky um if we do these three the benefit of this is that we cycle and doing faithless i mean it holds a copy holds a unit on the board but it could just die i think i'm just gonna go ahead and do this i think it's it's a little bit hilarious in a sense so we're gonna go ahead and do this it is against swarm if you don't know already for anyone that's new you can actually tell what faction they're playing based off the symbol there and it's kind of hilarious that a lot of people don't know this even people that have been playing for a long time so i'll teach you this right now that's swarm this is shadow fan the best thing here would be obviously vitalize anything else is still okay obviously poison is not the greatest but we're gonna have to make it work um gifted for level at level three is huge this is huge 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 and that's why i'm actually going to play it first before anything else i think gifted into dubious can work even gifted into lawless is probably better actually but definitely gifted first and then lawless after it can work considering this is a very powerful card i think i'm not going to put it uh, if you think about position wise actually it's better here or at least lawless or it has to go there but this is okay oh we can also set up a perfect clear <sighs> You shouldn't really trade because you're playing Rush, but you know, it's it looks really good. So I think I think I have to do that. Um this is what I'm trying to say about perfect clear is that once screen prototypes trades with the Seder right here, then what happens is it won't have anyone to bounce this death effect to, unless there is one exception. This right here. If they're able to somehow take over this tile, then obviously the green prototypes can bounce over there and then that is really bad because it gives two health and surrounding but as you can see it worked out in our favor this is a beautiful trait here actually is going to be really helpful for us and we're pushing forward i hope this this is going to keep at one at the very least okay nice okay though i mean they could have got confused or frozen there, which would have been pretty bad and uh, let's see what we can do honestly the best play like i don't even think you can argue this this into RO, rof is just huge and if you guys keep in mind the way we've been playing once i cycle this card out 
we're going to be start drawing our one manas for next turn which is huge because we're going to play out butchers for next turn or at least that's the plan right butchers for next turn plus one manas there you go there's a one mana so we can do like one mana with butchers that is huge because now we can get some very good mana efficiency you know six so five plus one and at the same time we can get some damage in so um order of attack this is gonna end up going here interesting we can still do so much damage it's insane let me see one two three four we can do six damage that keeps them at half health i think you have to do it guys <laughs> i don't think there's a world where you don't do the six damage and then you just hold the board um realistically i'm going to lose my board though so Du, 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 du. There's so many lines. I'm just trying to think what's the best way to do it. I think this is fine. I don't know because so right here you can either do a radic here, or you could do a radic here, which is obviously gonna get traded. The only reason why I'm debating this is because green prototypes can in the future become a perfect clear, which is pretty good. But is am I really going for that? Like I'm kind of playing rush. I don't think so. I don't, honestly, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play it here, and this is gonna walk down. They're gonna probably take retake this tile, and then I can set up a really cool crimson sentry to hit both in the future. That's kind of what I'm gonna go for. And heartbeats is honestly pretty bad. I maybe I should even just take that out. Put toxic in. That like toxic would definitely benefit this deck a lot more. There's our GP that I was expecting. So they perfect clear here. Unfortunately, <laughs> Gifted is just so strong. I don't know how I got this level 3. Oh, actually, I do know. I used Fusion Stunts. So that's the only way I was able to get to level 3. Spare here. It's interesting. So this Spare, I'm going to probably have to kill. Oh, we can get so much damage. Like, that's insane. We're going to actually just... Honestly, we might as well. We're already so ahead in, like, in damage and stuff. Like, we're already so ahead in terms of so much damage we dealt to their base so we're just gonna go ahead and clear a little bit play a little bit safe and this turn so if you think about the way i'm planning out my turns this turn right now is going to be the setup turn and once you just do the setup whoops i am not writing this properly once you do the setup <laughs> Okay, you guys get on trying. Once you do the setup turn, then for nine mana, we're probably looking for butchers. And at nine mana, butchers, what are we thinking of? We're five mana, and then we're going to need either a three and a one or a two two to maximize mana, right? So we're definitely going to do butchers next turn when it when it draws. And this turn, obviously, as you can see, we don't have the perfect hand that we need. I haven't been keeping totally, 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 totally in tr track of my cycles. I do think. Let me see. What did we cycle out? What did we cycle out? I can't remember. I honestly cannot remember. This is such a greedy play. This is weird. Hmm. Interesting. I can't remember, guys, what we're trying to... What it was, but... It's actually a little scary. I mean, Herald's him could be lethal, so I'm actually going to deal with this. But one thing to note is I don't think we need Lawless, actually. I don't think we need loss. If anything, Devious Hag is a little bit better because you could set up for, once again, Butchers. Ooh, Crimson Sentry is what it was. Crimson Sentry. Or we could actually just Dubious. Honestly, this, these are such good lines. Okay, um, I think I've decided what I want to do. So we could do this here. Crimson Sentry just to defend. I know, why are you defending? But honestly, it's the safest play. They do run Twilight Prowlers, which doesn't really scare me, especially if we position the board like this. Twilight Prowlers can only hit one of these units, so even if it hits, like if they play here, it'll go here, 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 and just finish here. If they play on this tile, it'll do the same thing. Um, or, I mean, they can play here and just go down here. Or they can, yeah, that's basically, that's like the only thing. So we're also playing around the Twilight Prowlers. I didn't even keep track of what the heck they stole, actually. <laughs> that might be a problem. Uh, but there's our Butcher. So like I said, this was a setup turn. Hopefully we can do a Butcher's turn for next turn. Interesting. Mm, so this is obviously not too good, but... Oh, we won. We won. We won. This game's over. Isn't this over? Let me see. One, two, three... We're one off lethal at the moment, and you can't really risk using Reign of Frogs. So I'm gonna cycle this out. Hmm, it's not quite lethal yet. Not guaranteed at least. One, two, I'm trying to think. I think you have to use Reign of Frogs and hope that it doesn't land here. If it lands here, we actually can't win this turn, which really sucks. But yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a tough one. Let's see what happens. Oof, and we get the beautiful win. So, fantastic. Um, at least I hope you guys understood what I was trying to say about the setup turn into the lethal turn. Um, 
you have to like make these very conscious decisions over time. Once you get used to it, then you, you understand what it is exactly you're trying to do, and then you can plan out for your future journey, right? Because if I didn't understand that, okay, I'm going to draw butchers and I should set up for lethal, then I wouldn't know exactly how I should plan out my other turn. But either way, I mean, I guess it was mostly textbook because I just defended in the end. But realistically, if you're playing like hardcore rush, you could just go full out rush next that turn and set up exactly for butchers. But I still did set up for butchers in the sense that I played around Twilight Prowlers. Anyways, let's get into the next game. Alrighty, so we're into our second game and here you guys go. I am so sorry, I apologize for not even knowing my, my faction symbols at the moment. It's like a complete blank when I'm trying to think about them. But th this is Winter. So Winter against Shadowfen. Um, I mean, they used to be a hard counter, uh, to be honest. But I feel like in the current meta, Shadowfen is pretty good. So I don't know. I mean, when you're playing with, like the factions the way the factions work um to be honest the meta in like lower ranks is completely different from higher ranks so if you're thinking about winter in the higher ranks it's actually pretty good with cards like gift of the wise or just uh i guess i don't know shivana i guess you could say cards like that are really good but in the lower rank things are a little bit different i mean shivana is still really good but you know there's some changes where gifts of the wise for example is not good at all so we're gonna keep this alive. We have butchers. I think uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, and I'm really looking to draw. Honestly, anything I draw here is good, right? Uh, except Crimson Sentry. I think Crimson Sentry would be my worst draw, but uh, three mana into two mana here would be fine. And two mana into two mana, one mana should be fine as well, I believe. Okay, actually, this two mana kind of stinky because I kind of because it might get in the way of this, but let's hope it doesn't. Yeah, this is going to be like disastrous in a sense, but thankfully they're not playing uh, Shadowfen. If they were playing Shadowfen, I would have to be worried about their butchers. So thankfully I don't have to worry about that. And we're kind of just chilling for the mo at the moment. So this trade really sucks. What happens is you end up losing out your butcher's value because if it landed anywhere else, that's actually plus two for the butchers. But because it landed there, that's minus two for the butchers. So that really sucks. But we'll see what happens. Oh my goodness, this is disgusting. So for those that don't know, the way it's going to attack is this way first. This is going to attack first and this is going to attack next. Um, how do I know that? Order of attacking. So for those who aren't totally familiar with what I am talking about, order of attacking refers to the order in which your units attack. Yes, the order of attacking is the order in which your units attack. You heard me correct. So if you any of you didn't understand that, honestly, you guys got to get your life straightened down. No, I'm just kidding, guys. That was the worst possible definition I could have given you guys. So I decided why not just explain it a bit better. So for anyone that's new and doesn't understand order of attacking, I mean, in the future, I will write a guide on this. However, just in the meantime, let me just give you guys a peace of mind. If you have a bunch of units on board, right? Let's say I have all these tiles filled up, then the order of attacking that I'm referring to is at the very start of your turn. You know how your units will move up? Well, what order do they move up in? Okay, so it actually always starts from the top left and it will always end over here. So this is the last unit to move. This is the first one to move. And the way it works is all of the, the first row will move up like this from left to right. And once the first row units have moved up, it moves down to the next row. So then pretty much this row, this unit would go up, this unit goes up, you, you get the idea, right? So it's like this and it moves down once again. Now, let's say there's a situation where there are four enemy units, something like this, right? And let's say I use my Loras to attack right here. And obviously we're gonna assume for this theory example that all these enemy units are weakened or at least weak. So now, if my Loras attacks in the center, we expect all these units to move into this area. But which order does it work? So this is what I was referring to by the order of attack. The unit that from our point of view that would have moved first going upwards into the enemy base is this one, right? Because it's the closest to the enemy base. And then second would be this one because it's from the left hand side. And lastly, it go from the third right hand, uh, right hand side. So it would go this unit goes in first let me just clear this up this unit goes in first this unit goes in second this unit goes in third and this works every time you play loris um a lot of people even in heroes league for example would not don't know this because they assume it's random but it is not random it's also in my true and false video if you guys don't know um i'll put something up here on screen so you can check that out and now let's think about it from the enemy's perspective let's say you have a bunch of units right here something like this right? I don't remember exactly how it was on the screen for the other part, but let's say I have a bunch of units here and Loris attacks here. I'm going to ask you guys, which order do these units move into this unit? 
So um, if you didn't understand the question, it's basically the exact opposite. It's flipped because it's from the enemy's point of view, but it would be this one, and then it'd be this one, and then it'd be this one. So one, two, three, this is the order of attacking from the enemy's point of view of Loris. And the reason why is because, you know how I would, uh, said that this is the first to move, this is last to move? Well, um, the board is completely flipped for the enemy. So actually this is the first to move and this is the last to move and it goes from right to left. So it go here first, here second, here third. And I think you get the idea by now. This is theory in a nutshell. I will probably do a guide in the future. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any more questions, leave something in the comments and I can answer it for you guys directly. So that's pretty much it. Back to the video. I probably did a really bad job explaining it. This is gonna end up attacking each other. Uh, what should I do? Honestly, I'm just gonna play super aggressive because I don't really know what I'm doing, but we're gonna settle with this. I think it's fine. I think it should be fine. This ends up attacking this as well, so that kind of sucks. Okay, let me let me think of a better way to explain to you guys because I feel like I completely butchered that um example here. Let me just let me just double check this for one sec. Okay, so from my point of view, let's take it from my point of view. Wow, everyone's running Twilight Problems level three. <laughs> from my point of view, it makes a lot more sense. Okay, so since we know that this is number one, two, three, four, and then we move on to the next row, pretty much if I use a Loris here to attack on this. Okay, let's say this is my Loris and I'm attacking this feline, then it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be from here and then the here and then here. This is the, the order that their units will attack into this stuff, which is actually the exact same order that your units will attack into the enemy base. I hope that makes sense. If I failed, I apologize, but that is the best way I could explain it. Butchers here is really stinky, but if we do six damage into the base, we could maybe get some kind of lethals in. Uh, oh, not six, sorry, this would be only five. So. I kind of don't think Butchers is a play, but then you end up throwing out your lethal runner, but it's okay. We're gonna try our best here. We're gonna go for Healer Troopers, GP Dubious. I think that is okay. And then we can play Erratic Neglects virtually anywhere. I think this is probably the better position. They did just play Loris, so I'm not afraid of that. And they did just play Twilight, so I'm not afraid of that either. Void Surges here would be big. It is winter, so outside of Void Surgers, I don't really know what else I'm worried about. I mean, Broken Earth Drakes would end up killing their own units. So um, the reason why this position might be a little bit better in my opinion is because then the Dubious Hags four spawns here. And I'm already assuming they're going to take over this tile. Okay, interesting. So now they don't even get the token, which could be good or bad, depending on how you see, how you, how you see the situation, really. So we're really close to lethal at this point. Really, really good. This also really sucks because if they have Shivana, that's going to be big. Icicle Burst as well. Anyways, um, I'm really looking at... This is kind of funny. You can do a funny Crimson Sentry setup where if they attack the Crimson Sentry, uh, Faithless Prophets gets hit, converts into the enemy unit. I think that's the play, actually. Does this work? I've never done this before. Once again, guys, this is our, our first time doing this kind of... It's kind of shenanigans. I misplayed actually. I should definitely play Gifted first because level three. We're gonna go ahead and play this. I think this works, which is kind of funny. I hope this works. <laughs> okay, so what is the what is the point of that play? Um, once they hit this, it's going to. This is like completely crazy to beginners here who probably don't understand it. It's going to convert. So this unit, after surviving damage, is going to convert itself to fight for the enemy. If they hit this, this unit will um, proc the effect. Hit this. Oh, it's not gonna work. That's so sad. Okay, but I will explain what I was trying to go for. This unit here, this Crimson Sentry, would have procced this Faithless Prophets, turning into the enemy unit. But not only is it turning it into the enemy unit, it's also poisoned. And if you guys refer back to my True or False, I believe episode two of my True or False series, what happens is an enemy Faithless Prophets that's poisoned will actually attack their own, like it will go backwards. Um, and in this case, it will go into their base at the start of their turn so it's kind of funny how that works and i believe we have lethal here i'm talking a little bit too much and we do actually have lethal there's no reason to use rain of frogs here because if i use rain of frogs i may end up blocking myself and i don't want to do that instead that was more secure and it's a guaranteed lethal so there you go this is gonna be game number two i'm sorry for kind of going through my thoughts a little bit a little too crazy i know it was like really really messy i think this is enough to call it episode two if you guys have any questions honestly just shoot a comment i'll explain it to you in better detail because i know i completely messed up a lot of these explanations and here we go we are in silver four now our decks are looking a lot better hope you guys enjoyed and catch you in the next one peace